Hello, my name is Dana Poole and I'm the lead author of the paper titled Locomotor and Robotic Assistive Gait Training in Children with Cerebral Palsy. Now the aim of this paper was to determine whether the addition of robotic assistive gait technology would enhance mobility outcomes compared to locomotor train alone on a treadmill. Now the reason why we did this is because we wanted to know whether there was more feasible options for children who are classified within GMSS level 3, 4 and 5 because we know there's not many interventions that are available that can improve and maintain healthy outcomes for children of those levels. There's very limited options and we really wanted to borrow what we know from the literature and spinal cord injury to children with cerebral palsy. So our aim was to recruit about 40 participants with cerebral palsy, GMSS level 3, 4 and 5, aged between 5 and 12 years. Now the main criteria is that they're allowed to weight bear and importantly they also had a form of reliable communication, either verbally or non-verbally, so they could tell us if they were in any discomfort or in any pain. So we randomly allocated them into one of two groups. The first group was children who used the RT600. Now the RT600 is like a locomotor train device, it's like elliptical training, with the addition of functional electrical stimulation that's applied to the lower limb muscles of the child. It is synchronized, so as the child moves through motion, electrical stimulation is fired off so that it really is in sync with a gait training program. Now after 20 minutes of being in this device, children then went over onto the treadmill for another 20 minutes and then from there they went in to do some overground training in their walking frame. So that was group one, that was the robotic group. We wanted to see if the addition of robotics had an enhanced outcome on gross motor function. Now the second group were children who underwent locomotor training using partial body weight supported treadmill training alone without the addition of robotics. So for this, they underwent about 40 minutes of the robotic of the non-robotic training, and then they went to do some overground training really specifically. Now the whole idea of this was, was very task specific and really still based on the goals that the children had. And importantly, children were using their own gait assisted training devices so they could use that as part of their training. Now the dosage. Children underwent three one-hour sessions over six weeks. And with that, they were assessed at three assessment time points at baseline post-treatment at the six-week mark and the week 26 mark as the follow-up point. Now our main outcome measures were primarily the goal attainment scale because we recognise the individual nature of a lot of the goals, but the secondary measures were more quantitative in nature being the 10 metre walk test, the WEFIM or the functional independence measure for children, the gross motor function measure as well as the Canadian occupational performance measure, both the performance and the satisfaction. Now our results indicate that there are no significant differences between the groups at any of the time points. And this was somewhat surprising to us and as, as such we rejected our hypothesis that robotic assistive gait training was going to be more effective than just locomotor training alone. But what this actually means is that you can see improvements in outcomes over time without the need for robotic assistive gait training. Because when you looked at the within group changes, there were changes that occurred over that whole period of time, so at the six week mark as well as the six month period mark. Now what this means is if you're in a clinic that doesn't have robotic assistive training devices available, you can still seem to be able to provide these outcomes for children who have very limited options in improving their functional mobility goals. Now some of those goals weren't just about walking. By and large, a lot of them were about wanting to be able to use their gait trainer or their gait assisted device more efficiently and more independently, to be able to steer, to be able to take more weight, to initiate steps. And some were very, very functional with regards to improving their ability to stand for standing transfers, as well as being able to dress, as well as some care and comfort areas around bowel function and respiratory health. So, even though there's no significant difference between the group, what I believe that this study shows is that there is a place for locomotor training in these children who usually need a lot more equipment. It does show that it's feasible, it's acceptable, there were no adverse events, and it's something that we should consider in our repertoire. But importantly, I think what this also highlights is we need to think about goals greater than just functional mobility alone. There is a lot of child health, quality of life measures that I would think we should be great to include in the future. And perhaps as clinicians, we should be thinking about the dosage and what other avenues we can really explore for children who have very limited functional mobility on their own.